Hello and welcome. This is Matthew, Chief Trainer and Consultant from TrainFor. In this video, I'm going to talk about distances, right? So in my previous video on KNN and NN algorithm, I was talking about two major concepts in KNN and NN, right? One was distance and the other one was trees. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about distances. But please be reminded that distances is not only used in KNN algorithms, but it is used in many other machine learning algorithms. So if you understand the concepts of difference or distances, that's going to help you build many other machine learning algorithms and to apply this concept of distance in many other machine learning algorithms. So in case if any one of you have not watched my previous video or not very sure on the basics of KNN, I would recommend you to watch that video. I'm leaving a link to that video in the description of this video. Okay, so let me tap your memory by just drawing something on the board. So we'll be able to connect with what we discussed in our previous video regarding KNN. Okay, so we were talking about KNN algorithms, right? KNN or NN, right? We were talking about two major concepts in that. One was distances. The other one was errors. Sorry, trees. Trees. Right? So distances and trees, major concepts. Once you are very clear with these two concepts, then you can easily apply these two concepts on your machine learning KNN algorithm, either to do a supervised analytics or an unsupervised analytics. So in supervised we have classification as well as regression. And in unsupervised, we have clustering. I hope you remember this. And in this particular video, we're going to talk about distances in detail. Okay. So let me put distances on this board and it start explaining to you various different various distances used in KNN or NN algorithm or be it any other algorithm, machine learning algorithm where distances are calculated. You can use that concept anywhere. Okay. So let me put distances quickly on the board and explain to you what are the components. Distances, right? So in KNN, at least I can talk about three different types of distances, okay? One is Euclidean distance. And then you will get to know something called that's Minkowski. distance and there's something called as Manhattan right so Manhattan the name came after the Manhattan in the US okay so there is an example to it you know we'll talk about that when we talk in detail about Manhattan so let's see that you know how Euclidean Minkowski and Manhattan distance are calculated and when to use where Okay, so Euclidean is also called as L2 norm distance. And you will also hear this as ridge. And finally, some people do call that as root means squared distance. Right? Manhattan in other, uh, in other terms, it is called as L1 norm. And it is lasso. We call it as mean absolute distance, right? We will get to know why these are called as RMS and MA in a bit, okay? So Minkowski is actually the generic formula. Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance calculation uses the formula from Minkowski, okay? So Minkowski is the parent distance calculation. Uh, and there is a term in Minkowski formula called as P is known as p. When p is equal to 2, that will become Euclidean. And when we substitute the value of p is equal to 1, that will become Manhattan, right? To better understand this, let me quickly put the formula for Manhattan. 
So the Manhattan formula works like this, i is equal to 1 to n xi minus yi 1 raised p. These are absolutes, okay, not brackets, what I'm putting here. And the whole thing raised to 1 by p. So when take p takes the value 2, right, this will become Euclidean. And when P takes the value 1, it will become Manhattan, right? So if I have to quickly put the formula here, this is how it will look like. That is I is equal to 1 to N XI minus YI, the whole square, XI minus YI is square. And the whole thing is taken as in the square. Okay, so 1 by p, if I substitute 2 here, it will become half and that becomes a square root and this becomes square. So that will become your calculation formula for Euclidean and whereas if I put p is equal to 1, right, if I substitute p is equal to 1, this formula is going to become i is equal to 1 to n xi minus yi. Simple, right? This is the formula because p will become 1 and 1 by p is equal to 1 by 1 is equal to 1. So I'm just going to remove these two terms and just make sure that I only keep these terms in the formula. So this is very simple. So Euclidean distance also called as L2 norm bridge or RMS distance and the formula is square root of the squared distance. And Manhattan distance is an L1 norm or lasso or mean absolute distance is just the absolute distance between the two points and the summation of it depends on the number of dimensions you have in the data. Okay, so since now you have understood the formula and the basic terms used in uh, the distance calculations, let's look at these things individually by taking examples of how do you calculate these distance and when to use what. Okay, so let me quickly put Euclidean on the charts. With an example, let's learn how do you calculate it and then quickly move to Manhattan before we close the video. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about Euclidean. Euclidean distance, right? So Euclidean distance, to better explain it, let me put a Cartesian space and I call this as X and Y. Okay, so I have got a point, say point 1, 2 and say 5, 6. If I have to calculate the distance between this point and this point, right? This is the distance what I want to calculate. I can very well use the Pythagoras theorem. If you remember that, the Pythagoras theorem, uh, I can just complete this like a right triangle, right? So in as per the Pythagoras theorem, this will become my base and this will become my altitude. And obviously this will become my hypotenuse. Right? So what's the formula? So if I have to name this as A, B and C, if I have to calculate my hypotenuse, that is AC, it is equal to AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square and the square root of it. Simple as that. This is my Pythagoras theorem, right? So if I have to substitute these values, I can quickly calculate it, right? So I will calculate. So if you want to uh, memorize, this is the formula, sigma A, i is equal 1 to n xi minus yi whole square and the square root of it. This is a formula, right? So if I have to quickly calculate it, how will I calculate it? So xi minus yi, my first x coordinate is 1 and this. So if I have to calculate this distance of ab, right? This is the distance, right? So what will I do? I will take 5, this is 5 and this is 1, right? So 5 minus 1, that will become my AB. My AB will become 5 minus 1, the whole square, plus, and what's BC for me? So BC is this particular point, that is 2, and this particular point will become 6 for me. So that's 6 minus 2, the whole square, right? And the square root of it. So which will become 4 square plus 4 square and the square root of it. It's 32 root of 32. 
that will become my distance. So it can be written as say 4 into 8. So that will become 4 into 8 square root, right? Which also can be written as say 2 root 8, right? That will become my distance of my hypotenuse. So this is the formula, right? To Euclidean distance calculated for these two points. So now let's come to the point where to use Euclidean distance. So Euclidean distance is a squared distance, right? So obviously when it is under the attack of outliers, right? When it is heavily under the attack of outliers, these outliers again get squared and taken and we take the square root. So it's a lot of complex transformation it goes through. So it will influence the value, right? It, will, it may inflate the value. So obviously, when you your data set is under the attack of outliers, generally we don't prefer Euclidean distance, okay? And also, this cannot handle uh, big dimensions, right? So if you have, say, two or three dimensions is what max, what generally we prefer Euclidean distance. And if you've got multiple dimensions, say, thumb rule more than 10 dimensions, uh, we cannot generally use Euclidean distance, okay? So two things which we need to call. Euclidean use where no outliers and small dimensions, right? Maybe preferably less than say, let's say that, let's say five. Just as a rule of thumb. There's nothing written anywhere, but less than five. This is what I generally say. So if this is the situation, we can definitely use Euclidean and the formula is this one, right? Okay, now let's quickly see for the same example, right? For the same example, I want to calculate what is my Manhattan distance. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Manhattan distance. Here. Right? So I'm just going to rub this so that I can write the where Manhattan is used. Okay, so this will become my Y and this will become my X, right? I'm going to rub this whole thing and let's see how Manhattan distance is calculated, right? So Manhattan distance, as the name says, that you know, it is a place in the US, it's a busy place and it's an uptown, right? So if I have to put a map for Manhattan, it will look like this. The city of Manhattan will look like this, right? A busy streets, a lot of roads going horizontal and vertically, and you have got buildings here and probably here. So you are in this building and you want to reach this particular building. So if you use any of the navigational system, it does not show you the distance like this, right? Because I've got many buildings here. You can't really jump over buildings and reach there. So the only way to reach there is that, you know, I take this path, right? I take this path and I will travel here. So my distance will become this plus this distance. So that will become my total distance, right? So Euclidean distance, we will calculate it by calculating the hypotenuse. So that gets ruled out when it comes to Manhattan, right? So we don't have this luxury anymore because Manhattan will not work if there is an aerial distance to be calculated. It can only take horizontal movement and vertical movements. And that's a typical difference between Euclidean distance and a Manhattan distance. So in Manhattan distance, it's, it's vertical movements and horizontal movements. And we cannot, we don't generally compute anything in aerial way here. Right. So how will we calculate the distance then? Right. In this way, I just explained to you very, very clearly. Right. This is no more the base, nothing. I'm just putting these coordinates back. This will become my one, two point, And this is my five, six point. Right. So what's the formula? Just to tap your memory, let me write the formula here. That's summation i is equal to one to n absolute of xi minus yi. So remember, this is also called as mean absolute distance, right? It's because we are taking the absolute number. So in case of this particular example, if you have to calculate the Manhattan distance, so what you do is I will first calculate this distance, 
So that distance can come from, say, this is my five and this is my one, right? So five minus one. So that this distance is four for me, right? So xi minus yi, that is five minus one absolute summation. And this distance will become, this is six for me and this is two for me. So six minus two absolute. So that becomes four plus four is equal to eight. So my, my, my Manhattan distance between these two points is nothing but eight, okay? So strictly another example and an application for everyone to follow. Uh, typically in a chessboard, you see that, right? There are whites and black columns. So if you wanna create an auto algorithm, right? A machine learning algorithm to do the chess, Manhattan distance is actually preferred because if you take an example, the horse movement is like two steps forward and one to the right or to the left, right? So typically the same way you can calculate the distance uh, and very quickly create your algorithm for prediction of chess movements. So that's one of the key examples where Manhattan is used, right? So, but to generalize it, I would really want to give you two pointers right here. So where is Manhattan used? It is used when there is an attack of outliers, right? Why? Because we take the absolute differences between the coordinates. So uh, we are not squaring it. We are not taking any logarithm or anything. It's just the absolute number. So we are not actually manipulating the number. So it is less influenced by the outliers, right? Because if you take a square or a logarithm, it's actually amplifying, right? So it will have um, the distance, overall distance also gets amplified there. And it's, all, uh, and it's also because of a rule called as the curse of dimensionality, because uh, in high dimensional data, right? When it absolutely gets uh, messy, uh, your, your, the far points and the near points will, the distance between uh, a far and a near point will absolutely looks like the same, okay? So that's the curse of dimensionality. Uh, but you know, to just to summarize this, uh, it is used when typically it is when there is an attack of outliers, attack of outliers, and then it is multidimensional. Let's say that you know it is say, greater than five, maybe just to put as a thumb rule. So when your dimensions are more than say five, and then you know it is under the attack of outliers, and if you are, if you cannot calculate the aerial distance, if you want to calculate this way uh, as horizontal and vertical movement, is where we will use a Manhattan distance. And I really think that it is very important for you to understand these distances separately because why creating the algorithm you use cross validation right you use cross validation and find out which distance works in your favor okay so th there is actually that facility so you can use that facility as well i hope you enjoyed this video you you, you also could understand the differences between these distances and where to apply when um, and if you really like this video Please keep tuning into this particular channel. I will be putting more videos and my upcoming video will be about trees, uh, which are, is another important concept in KNN. And finally, uh, we will know these two concepts and you can easily apply these two concepts in your KNN algorithm. Thank you so very much. Uh, this is Matthew from Trainform. Um, you all have a great day.